Welcome to the second episode in the Survival Skills Africa series. In this video I'm going to go through the basics of crossing rivers safely and how to deal with the effects of hypothermia after you've crossed that river. Remember to have a look at the rest of the episodes in this series and also the consolidated video Survival Skills Africa where you can find all of these survival skills together in one video. I'm Clarice and welcome to the Liberty channel. reached the water but it's such an enormous body of water for me to swim across this river is an enormous risk first of all there may be predators in that water um, and I don't want to risk myself getting halfway through the river and then either drowning because the dog is on top of me or um, some of the other predator gets to me so I'm gonna go a little bit further along the river and see if I can find a safer place to cross I'm quite fortunate in that I have a base layer in my bag that I can change into once I've gotten to the other side. That's gonna help me to change into something dry. In Joshua 4 verse 7, God tells the Israelites to make a memorial stone pile next to the Jordan River where he dried up the river to allow them to cross. Similarly, he tempers our environment and the elements in our environment to ensure our success. We just need to remember to give God glory for our achievements and remember that it's not by our own strength and he'll continue to provide for us. So I've come a little further along the river and when it comes to river crossings, you always want to start your crossing upstream of where you want to end. So if I want to end downstream, I've got to start around here somewhere. The current of the river is going to push me downstream and I've got to use that to my advantage in order to get across. Now lucky for me, it hasn't rained in a couple of days and this river is not in flood, but I have made a dedicated video on surviving river crossings. So if you do need to cross a river that is in flood, go and check out that video. You always want to unhook your bag, especially your breast buckle um, from your bag. You can even only sling it over one shoulder to make sure that you're safe and that your gear doesn't snag on anything inside the water. I don't know how deep this is so I'm, I'm kind of bargaining on that I'll probably have to swim some part of the way. And there are a couple of things that I would ideally like to keep dry. Some of which is my maps, my clothing, my shoes and any electronic equipment that you've got also needs to stay dry. For that I have a dry bag. So all the important stuff is gonna go in here. I usually keep this plastic bag around so that if I need to make a solar still or gather water by transpiration, I've got a plastic bag with which to do that. Um, the other advantage of this is that you can make a quick makeshift shelter with it and of course keep your gear dry. You want a set of dry clothes and a set of wet clothes. You change into your dry clothes at camp and your wet clothes you wear during the day so that you've always got a set of dry clothes to sleep in. So here's some rope that's gonna help me get down this ledge. The other thing that I really want to keep dry, oh, where is it, is my fire kit. I really want to keep that dry because if I get out on the other side and this water is freezing cold, then at least I've got something to start a fire to warm myself up with. My jacket, or whatever sleeping system you've got, you also want to keep that dry. As I'm closing this, any extra air that's in here is going to help this bag to float so that your bag doesn't sink if you drop it and it can help you with a bit of extra buoyancy. Because not all rivers are easy to get into and out of, I'm gonna make use of this stick and a bit of rope just to help me down here. I don't wanna jump into the river because I don't know what's down there. So just to be safe, I'm going to just do two bowline knots around this and make a little rope for myself to climb down with at all. And then I'm just gonna make a few handholds for myself. We want to avoid having to cross rivers in the first place and when we do have to cross a river we never want to cross where there are rapids and we never want to cross where the river or the speed of the water is faster than walking speed. 
Ideally, you also don't want to have to cross the river where it's deeper than thigh depth. Make sure that you never approach rocks from the upriver side, always approach them from below, from downriver. While you're in the water, make sure that every step is secure before you commit to it. Sometimes there are loose rocks or things that shift around. Um, there can sometimes be sharp objects, either rocks or sticks or debris underneath the water. There's always a risk of hypothermia, even if it's a nice sunny day, the air temperature is cool, the water temperature is going to be even colder than that. And once I'm through the water, I'm going to want to try and get warm as quickly as possible. That's why I want to keep my clothes as dry as possible. And we always try to keep our shoes dry. So I did quite well with my grappling hook, but man, that water is cold. First signs of hypothermia, shivering, uh, difficulty with fine motor skills. I've got to get warm and in the two space blanket, gonna dry off my clothes. I'm just gonna wring out the worst of the wetness. Luckily there's quite a bit of sunshine left and um, the activity will help me to dry off. Indy caught a ride on the bag. <laughs> Great flotation device, what do you think Indy? So yeah, there is merit in actually inflating the stuff in your bag and using that as a float. So with my clothes hanging up to dry, what I've done is I've changed into my dry base layer. This allows me to warm up while my clothes dry out, but I do see some clouds incoming. For me to prevent hypothermia, what I need to do is separate the general macroclimate from the microclimate that immediately surrounds my body. So I need to create a barrier. I'm going to do that using a space blanket or a mylar blanket. The other thing that I need to do is remove anything that's wet from around me. So I've changed out of my wet clothes and while they hang up, I've changed into my base layer. Now this is a merino wool base layer. I usually keep it in my bag so that I have something dry to change in. Ideally, you want a dry set of clothes and a wet set of clothes. You wear the wet set of clothes during the day. You wear the dry set of clothes at night so that you don't sleep in wet clothing and you don't have to become hypothermic and you don't deal with the temperature. Doggy. So I'm going to take my space blanket which admittedly is a bit wet, even though it was in a plastic bag inside my bag. My actual bag is still wet as well. The second thing I'm going to do is, from my fire kit, take a small tea candle. You can use anything that will burn for emergency fire making. This is when you use your gas. Put that inside the mylar blanket with me. If you've got a wool blanket, you can use a wool blanket or even a jacket to do this. It may seem like a small thing, but it really makes a huge difference to sit in here versus the cold air out there. What I've effectively done is created a microclimate in here. I've got a pocket of air that I'm busy warming through this little candle. I've removed all of the cold, wet stuff from inside the shelter, so my wet clothes are outside drying in the sun. I don't know how dry they're actually gonna get, but at least I won't be losing heat through conduction because I'm wearing wet clothes. There's a little bit of cold air coming from my left elbow. There must be a gap somewhere in the blanket there. Before you get into the water, remember that wedding rings and sunglasses don't float. So if you've got anything that's really valuable, try and stow it away in your bag or even in one of your pockets, make it safe. If you lose your bag, it might float down the river, it might sink. Um, and you might lose those items. If there's something valuable, try and stow it away somewhere safe. Um, keep wedding rings and things like that in safe places before you get into the water. So I've done a little recce and I am correct in saying this game trail does actually lead to another body of water. Um, the animals will come to drink down here. Luckily it's not a huge river, I don't have to swim through it, but it's deep enough for me to need to take my shoes off and walk through barefoot, which doesn't sound like fun. Um, we have some seriously venomous snakes in the area. <laughs> So plowing through this bush here, not, not my idea of fun. But we'll get through on the other side. I'll deposit Doggy as well. Hey, you're going to catch a ride. I won't let her walk through that. Um, so I'll carry her through and hopefully we get through on the other side. Not too bad. Okay, shoes off, Doggy. So I'm going to keep my boots dry so as not to have to walk around in wet shoes for the next day. Hey? Okay. Just like that. Okay. Shoes go around the neck. Ready. Let's go. 
Oh, there's some prickly bushes here. Through the bushes oh, and we hit the water. So we're through the river. That's how deep it is. <laughs> At least um, I didn't have to swim through, but it was a bit deeper than I thought. And I should actually ideally have undone my waist belt on my bag and just flung it over one shoulder, but I underestimated how deep that water was. Um, so there's a lesson learned. Now I can get dry once again, put my shoes back on and start looking for a campsite. Come doggy. Well guys, that's it from me on how to cross rivers safely. Be sure to check out the rest of the videos in this series. I've done a compilation video that puts together all of the survival skills in a short list. Remember to drop a comment in the comment section below and until the next time, live ready. Yeah.